Well, most of you know who I am. I'm the state representative, Tony Cabral, from New Bedford. Uh, we are in my district, this area here. And today is October the 26th, 2012. And the beginning, hopefully, is what, 10 05, 10 10, something like that? Uh, <laughs> On the record, please. On the record. Well, good morning again. This is wonderful for, uh, for all of you to come today and participate in this event. This is really a wonderful event for all of you. Uh, it is very special for us, and we know it's extremely special for Roland's family. Uh, as you all know, he worked with Roland over the years. Roland was very passionate about his work. He, did, he worked very diligently. He really cared about his community. He cared about his region. Uh, so that's the reason why, some of the reasons why we are here today, dedicated, dedicated this span of Route 6 uh, on as the Roland Hebert span or bridge, if you want to call between here and the rest of the uh, mainland New Bedford, if I may say. Uh, you know, we first got contacted by uh, Steve, uh, and also the city council also was active on this issue of trying to move a piece of legislation to really make this day possible. The weather is cooperating. Uh, it's a wonderful day before the storm. Uh, and uh, we thought today would be a wonderful day to, uh, to begin the ceremony. I'm excited about it. Uh, Roland lived in my district basically all his life. Uh, Roland was a great supporter of South Coast Rail and the funding plan that we have put together to fund the building uh, of South Coast Rail. Someone who kept advocating uh, not only for his community and for all of our the transportation needs of Southeastern Mass, but a great fan of rail and why he thought import, how important it was for us to finally get back connected to, to Boston through rail. So uh, I had many conversations with Roland on that issue and many others, and um, I wish he was here to continue uh, to advocate with us, work with us closely, and be the great supporter that he was uh, for uh, for South Coast Rail and many other projects that all of you work work on and you have worked you worked with them. So I'm gonna pass the, the microphone now to uh, the, my Senate colleague, my state senator, uh, the one who was a co-sponsor as well on the Senate side, uh, for a few uh, a few remarks, and then I'll be back. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Tony is also my state representative, and we live a half a block apart, so we have to work together, uh, even when we disagree, which isn't all that often, actually. Uh, but this this was an honor uh, to uh, co-sponsor with Tony. I, w I wanted to say personally to you, Mrs. Hebert, and to you, Pam, and, and to Christine, and to Robert, and to Yvette, and particularly to Olivia. And I don't know the little tiny guy's name, so, and he, and Aiden, and he doesn't know yet that I'm going to speak longer than he wishes, but Olivia, but Olivia does. Um, Christine started out uh, in a conversation with us and said, I'm going to lighten the moment, so she gave us the opening to do the same. And I was thinking when I was reading through all of the uh, stuff over the years, all the great work Roland did, uh, I've known him for many, many years, like all of you here. Um, I was thinking of his colleagues like Steve Smith and the planning uh, folks in Surfed thinking of Dave Kennedy and those that uh, spent a lot of time with Roland. But then I, I thought about it. No one wants to plan their ending, and certainly no one wants to lose uh, a son, uh, a husband, a brother, a grandfather, a uh, father at 66. Uh, and it's, you know, I guess it lightens it up if you say, well, if you were going to go, it's, you know, how could you go in a better place than doing your passion over 300 dives? Um, can't think of a, of a more interesting place than Fiji, uh, but then I thought, how could we do this to Rome? Every time that bridge is stuck, and every time it is open for 20 minutes, they're going to say, who is this Roland Hebert guy? So uh, on a serious note, though, I can't think of a better way to honor a man who spent his entire life making this region work better. Uh, this, of course, retaining the history of this bridge has been a planning nightmare. 
Um, as Tony mentioned, I can't think of a project that we have done together. Remember, we go up there every day thinking, how can we get an extra dollar for this region? And frequently, because of the priorities in economic development, it is transportation or infrastructure. So most of the work we've done, we rely on people like Roland and the staff at Surfhead and, and, and the city planning agencies to actually implement the work that we do on Beacon Hill. So that means we spent hundreds of hours working through it with people like Roland. And then we basically cut a ribbon and go home and he picks up the pieces. And he did it so well, uh, not only because he was brilliant and a great talent in planning and organizing and design, it was more than that. And I, I of course, as, as one of the leaders with these folks here on commuter rail and, and infrastructure projects, worked with them all the time. So we saw the brilliance, we saw the expertise, we saw the patience, but more than anything, what, what I think is that you know, he stayed in New Bedford by choice, he traveled the world by choice and privilege, but came back here because he loved the city so much. That's something he had in common with every one of us behind this podium. And I consider him a, a, my friend. I considered him to be one of the great leaders. Uh, he didn't have to put his name on the ballot every couple of years, every day. He went out there and said, how can I make this beautiful city and the greater region easier and more workable and more beautiful? And I'll close with this. The one thing that he and I shared greatly because of his passion for travel is if you love this city the way we do, you love it even more when you see the rest of the world and come home. Um, and he did. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving us so much of his time. Thank you, Senator Montaigne, uh, always eloquent, always difficult to follow him, right? Uh, but he's a great partner in the legislature, a great friend, a great neighbor, by the way. Uh, so uh, thanks very much. Let me, uh, besides all his friends and co-workers here that we have this, this morning, we have uh, uh, his whole entire family, for the exception of one daughter, I believe, is here. Uh, so we have with us Pamela Hebert, his wife. Uh, Hilda Hebert, the mother, Roland's mother, Robert Bruce Hebert, his brother. We have Christine Sleeper, his sister, and with us we have also one of his daughters, uh, Yvette Inker. Uh, she's here, and the other daughter was not able to be with us, and that's Rayanne de Silva. Uh, for a few words, so we changed slightly the order. We thought it would be interesting to have someone from the family up front tell us a little bit more about Roland especially those little things that probably, after all these years of work with Roland, we didn't know about. <laughs> uh, so it's, I thought it was always nice to go out front. So uh, for a few words on behalf of the family, this sister Christine Sleeper. Thank you so much, Representative McGraw. I was trying to lighten up the moment with them a little while ago, because if anybody knew my brother, they must have figured he was colorblind, like we all thought he was colorblind. If you saw the shade of color in his office, or the ties that he wore, we, or some of the outfits he came to for the holidays, we always kind of looked at him and went, oh my God, you know, we know Penny didn't dress you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's always been a thing for us. He had so many ties, I think it would outfit everyone in the city of New Bedford. Well, I am Christine Sleeper, and on behalf of my mother, Hilda Hebert, my sister-in-law, who we call Penny, many of you know her as Pam, uh, my nieces, Rayanne and Yvette, and their families, my brother Bob and his family, and my family, I would like to thank Senator Mark Montigny, Representative Tony Cabral, Mayor John Mitchell, and all the fine people of Serpent, and Mass Department of Transportation. If I have forgotten anyone, please forgive me. My brother Roland loved his family, and it still sometimes seems so unreal. I keep expecting to pick up the phone and talk with him. Before he and Penny left for Fiji, we, as brothers and sister and spouses, had a great time at Mike's, rest at Mike's restaurant in Fairhaven. We were extremely loud and enjoyed the food and the drinks and each other's company. I do remember the last thing I said to my brother when we ended that evening is I hugged him, I gave him a kiss, and I said, I love you very much, and I can't wait for you to come back from Fiji so we can do this again. A beautiful evening as a family that I will always treasure and thank God for. 
The memory always brings a smile to my face and warmth to my soul. My brother loved this country, serving it as an ensign in the United States Navy. I so remember being in high school and worried about both my brothers serving in the military through the Vietnam War. God kept them both safe. It seems we are a military family of sorts with our sons and our past sons serving and protecting our beloved country and the branches of the Navy, Air Force, and Army. I have two sons who are lifers, one in the Navy, he's a, a chief in the, on, in the United States Navy, another son who is in the Air Force as a master sergeant, and I have a godson who's in the Army, so we do love this country and we're proud of our family for protecting it. My brother always wanted to be a part of the inner works of the city of New Bedford in some way or other since I can always remember. He was committed to doing the very best for New Bedford and for Massachusetts. My brother loved his job and respected and admired all of those who worked for him, so I thank you for that. He really did admire and respect all of you. Um, his desire was to see and assist with the continued growth of our Commonwealth and especially greater New Bedford. It is a great honor you have bestowed upon us and my brother, and I thank you deeply from the bottom of our hearts. Here we go. The thighs. Do you remember that? All those thighs? Yeah, you have quite a colorful set of thighs. I remember some of them. Uh, so, Christine, thank you very much to lighten it up a little bit, and uh, I know that you had talked to me about that wonderful dinner you, you guys have at a family before the trip, and um, I know that was a memorable dinner, uh, so that was great. We have with us also other state legislators that will help us uh, move this legislation through the House and the Senate. Uh, we have with us um, Representative Strauss from Land Poison. Just briefly, I wanted to add a few things because it was my privilege to get to work with Roland quite a bit uh, when I came into the legislature 20 years ago. And I uh, wasn't sure what I would uh, try and say today, but one of the things that impressed me in the few minutes before things started was to see how many people are here, and, and they're municipal officials from all over Plymouth, Bristol County, uh, state officials, federal officials with Federal Highway, uh, the planning community, it's just a diverse people, a diverse group of people. And it makes me realize as much as I got to work with Roland on projects uh, affecting my towns and of course uh, uh, on the efforts for commuter rail, uh, he worked with a lot of different people. So while pretty much everybody standing out here and look around at each other, we all knew Roland we all don't know each other, but as you look around, you realize the extent to which uh, he touched so many different people. And uh, I have an ear for some of the euphemisms people are using today to describe uh, his demeanor, because he could work with you, that's fine. Uh, and uh, like a lot of people, he found people agreeable who agreed with him. Uh, but if you didn't agree with him, I guess the word I would use is, and I used it earlier, is uh, he could be grumpy. <laughs> and, I, and I see some other people agree. Uh, but you take that in the best way because he would then redouble his efforts and convince you uh, to come around. And he would never stop working. And so for those of us who uh, continue to serve in the legislature, or specifically focus on issues uh, of transportation, for our region, uh, we have a lot of unfinished business, and uh, and one of the people we can do it in honor of is Roland, because there's so much work that he's put uh, in our hands that we still rely on uh, on these projects and uh, and being advocates. So uh, this is a, a great thing. It's not enough, but it's still a great thing to do in his name and for the family members who knew him best. Uh, we're just proud to have a chance to share this moment with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill, now for a few remarks. Uh, Representative Kekuaro from Lakeville. Thank you, and it's an honor to be 
here today. I am one of the ones who, who did not know Roland, and I, I'm new to the legislature, but one of the, the first things that I, one of the meetings that I had was with Surfed, and, and they spoke so highly of Roland Hebert. And as they told me stories and they told me of how hard he worked, uh, I, I knew that I wanted to be here today, and I am honored to meet the family. And I think it's great that his first great grandson is here, Aiden. And I think that as people who didn't know Roland Hebert come up to this bridge and they're waiting to cross, they they'll they'll be honored as well that they um, have a citizen in from New Bedford who has given so much to the city and given so much to the community. So thank you so much for the honor of participating. Thank you, thank you Faygo. Uh, well, a few uh, some remarks as well. The mayor of the city of New Bedford, Mayor John Mitchell. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, I wanted to pick up um, with something that Representative Strauss said a moment ago, uh, because it really does uh, bear emphasis. You know, Roland touched a lot of lives. Um, and you know, as you look out at the crowd, I see state officials, I see city officials, there Rosemary Tierney, Ron Bell, Steve Smith, David Kennedy, people that worked with him uh, on numerous projects over time. And I, I just direct this to, to uh, the Hebert family, to Pam, Mrs. Hebert, Christine, and Robert. Uh, savor the, this moment. If you take a look, and I hope at some point during the ceremony you turn around and see all these people who are gathered here right now. I mean, this is, it is pretty remarkable um, that um, you know, all these people were touched one way or another uh, by your son. And, and, it's, and it really speaks to the kind of impact um, and the kind of service that, that he delivered to, uh, to the city of New Bedford and to the region generally. Um, I want to commend Representative Cabral and Senator Montigny uh, for their work on the bill, and, uh, as well as uh, the work of uh, the other state reps, Rep, Rep Strauss, Rep Markey, I know supported the bill, Rep Borel uh, and, uh, and Rep Cazera supported the bill. Uh, the city council uh, was extremely supportive of, of this uh, happening today uh, and for good reason um, you know i i knew i didn't get a chance to, to work with roland I, I i knew him uh, on a personal level i really I really enjoyed his company i really enjoyed his thoughtfulness he was your son was a whip smart guy uh who had new veteran at his at his heart in his heart all the time and uh, uh the thing that that uh, i most impressed with and from my standpoint perhaps one of the most important parts of his legacy uh, is uh, he was unyielding in his commitment uh, to uh, the standard by which New Bedford should be treated. In other words, that what was uh, might have been good enough for uh, New Bedford in the eyes of some people in Boston or elsewhere was not good enough for him. And, uh, and I think that's something that we all should take away from the ceremony, that this is a wonderful, wonderful city a wonderful region that deserves the very best and that's that's what Roland expected uh, whether it was bridge projects or South Coast Rail uh, or projects within the city he knew that this city deserved the best and uh, 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 we the city we the state uh, federal government we don't the government generally doesn't name prominent landmarks like the New Bedford Grand Haven Bridge after just anybody um, he had made a big impact, and what you see today with the crowd gathered here and the, the site itself reflects that this man uh, uh, had a huge impact uh, on New Bedford, and we pay tribute to him today, but most of all by continuing to maintain the standard that he set for our city and to continue to work to make uh, this place a better place for everyone to live. So thank you very much for attending today. Mayor Mitchell, uh, and for some remarks, someone who worked very closely with Roland, who knows him very well in the workplace, uh, besides being a good friend of Roland, um, Steve Smith, Executive Director of Surfout. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Tony. This is a beautiful day, but you know, you got to think that Roland would have been just as excited if we were out here Monday standing in the middle of Hurricane Sandy, and that would be his nature. Um, 
I, I worked with Roland for 30 years and, and about 40 hours a week and, and many of the people here certainly did that. But for those of you in the family, you knew Roland a lot longer in a lot more intimate way. Um, we all had the privilege of, of knowing Roland. I think one thing we can all know about Roland, whether you know him for five minutes or whether you know him a lifetime, is this guy got more out of one minute of every day than anyone I have ever known. Last night I was with somebody talking about this event, New Roland, and she said, you know, I can't think of a better person to name a bridge after, which I thought was a very sort of profound statement, and I really can't think of a better bridge to Roland, because this embodies the two things that Roland was very passionate about. And those who know Roland, he was basically passionate about everything, but two things he was most passionate about were his hometown, city of New Bedford, and transportation. He was very proud of the city, he served as an ambassador, and he wore his love for the city on his sleeve, literally. And he would tell us about uh, when he traveled with Penny to the Caribbean or the Southwest or whatever, he loved to wear a New Bedford t-shirt so he could serve as an ambassador for the city and sell New Bedford to, to people, and he, and he had that love always. There's an, another fashion thing, as long as we're on that theme, his ties have been mentioned, but I should bring up the cowboy hat because we don't know who Roland was being an ambassador for when he wore the cowboy hat. Uh, but what we know him, most of us here know him as is his passion for transportation. In 30 years of serpent, he was a strong advocate for a great transportation system. He was also willing to go one step further. He was always willing to be the skunk at the lawn party and say, we need to pay for it. He pushed very hard for a gas tax and would argue this point with anyone who would listen and I'm sure to many people who didn't want to listen. Um, but his lasting legacy is the transportation projects around this region. And there's not a major project in Southeast Massachusetts that's gone down the last four years. He does not have all the presentation on the replacement of the Franklin Street Bridge in uh, Fall River in Somerset because the planner in charge of that had walked off the job. And Roland did that, he did it well. He went on five years later to be the uh, project manager for the environmental assessment and the preliminary design. And last year we did dedicate the uh, Veterans Memorial Bridge. It took 30 years, actually it took longer than 30 years. You can't drive by that bridge or over that bridge without thinking about it. Now, lest you think he was only a highway guy, and we did call him the Tsar of Tar, that was his nickname in the office, but he truly was multi He cared about more than highways. Um, before he came to circuit, he was in the Tibetan planning department in the 1970s, and he worked with Ben Baker on the establishment of the Southeast Regional Transit Authority. So, Eric was somewhat on your job to Roland to some extent because uh, he got uh, Serta off the ground and stayed with Serta and worked with Serta throughout his career in Serta. He was also a big advocate for the New Bedford Airport. And as the mayor said, he always made the point of making sure New Bedford got its fair share. He actually stepped over the line with the airport and he got the Homeland Security Council all upset with him. He thought he was being a little bit too parochial of trying to direct money to his hometown for that project, but he never stopped. Uh, it's been said uh, by several people, he was a long-time advocate of South Coast Rail, always pushed, always uh, pushing for it, and was actually the rest of us, like the rest of us, fairly impatient with how slow it was going. And I would note with some irony that the bridge that we are dedicating to Roland, he wanted to tear it down. He, <laughs> Roland was a big advocate for a new New Bedford Fair Haven Bridge. And someday, if that happens, we could have a rededication ceremony and pick up the sign and move it. But as a, as a co worker, a couple of things I'd like to uh, share about Roland on behalf of his staff. First of all, he was very opinionated, he was actually contrarian at times. He was great fun. Christmas parties all around revolved around Roland's antics. He was extremely knowledgeable. He was willing to share that knowledge about the region, about transportation, and he was a leader that inspired the staff. That's really important. 
And finally, we love to serve the pot. We always love to serve the pot. We miss rolling every day as friends, as colleagues, as users of the transportation system. And but we can take some comfort in the fact that we have a better transportation system because of rolling. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you, Chairman Cabral. First, I want to thank the family and Christine. That was great uh, speech that you gave about Roland. Uh, many friends and family who are here today as well. And for the viewers uh, who are watching this at home, if you didn't know Roland after the many speeches that we heard here today, especially Christine who gave that wonderful remarks about her brother, you leave today feeling that you knew Roland all along. And as Chairman Cabral has stated earlier, uh, we, the City Council, um, I sponsored a motion on behalf of Mr. Eber to have uh, this dedication. And as you know, the, it passed unanimously to our legislators. But the funny thing is, is that even though Roland is not here today, I have a, a funny feeling that Roland is still working his magic up there and advocating be, on, on behalf of all of us. Because the City Council, as you know, we file hundreds and hundreds of motions a month on behalf of our citizens, our constituents, uh, for a better New Bedford. And this was one piece of legislation on behalf of the council that we filed to have this dedication that within weeks our legislators behind us filed a motion, had it going, uh, signed it, and said, hey, we're working on it. Uh, we're working on Roland Hebert. Only if we could get the rest of the 100 motions signed by our legislators and move some other stuff along, that would be great. But that, yeah, it was a rare good idea. Rare good idea. <laughs> but let, let's give that credit to uh, to Roland Heber up there, who, even though he's gone, he's still with us. He's still advocating for us here. Uh, he has a very special interest, as you know, uh, for the viewers who are watching this at home, for our transportation, for our better New Bedford. And Chairman Cabral has said uh, it's too bad that he's not with us, but he's smiling up above right now at all of us and probably taking credit for this sign that's that's here today and saying even though I'm gone fellas I'm still up above advocating on behalf of the city of New Bedford a city that I love and the city councilors uh, know that we have filed several motions on on behalf of Mr. Heber uh, and that's the thing that we, we love to do uh, regardless if you as you know he was very opinionated regardless if you were with him or not uh, we wanted to make sure Roland was happy and file those motions because if you did it, uh, no Roland, you hear it from him of why you, you, you didn't file something on, on behalf of the city. But it is a pleasure to be here with all of you. I know he's smiling down at us now and saying, uh, I am not gone. My work will still continue. And it just so happens that it is here in many stories that we have here with Roland. We could be here all day and share a funny story uh, with Roland and share it with his family and friends who are here today. But it is a great location that now that we pass here and wait for either the bridge uh, to come back down or just pass along to get to our location that you can remember a great memory and a great experience that you had with Roland. And it, is, it was an honor to work with this team back here who made it possible, which is a great team. And they, and they really moved quickly uh, to make this possible. Thank you very much. Steve, and let me also thank Ron LaBelle and his department for helping us today to make this, this smooth. Thank you, Ron, for all your help. And uh, obviously, messed up. 
Mass style also was a great uh, part, uh, uh, making sure this was going to happen. Uh, they were, uh, they worked quickly. Not all the time, but this at this time, <laughs> they worked quickly because we wanted the, the flag to be done on time for this for this uh, ceremony, and they they came through. All you have to do did all the projects this quickly. Uh, we wouldn't have to wait like what the span of uh, 140 was like what two or three years. <laughs> but anyway, they do great work, and, and we, I want to thank them as well for the good uh, partners on this uh, event. And for a few remarks from Mastop, we have David Moeller. Thank you, Dedicating a bridge to him. Um, he was a tireless advocate for transportation in this region. As was said before, you won't find a project in this region now or for a long time in the future that doesn't have a speaker print on it. Um, a lot of the reason people paid attention to New Bedford is because of role in the people like him, who fought and continued to fight and good fight. Um, I would like to say um, at this time, we are going to provide mock ups of the sign to the family. I know, you've heard enough. We're going to uh, close just by once again saying to you, uh, Penny and Christine and Yvette and Mrs. Hebert and, and uh, Robert, thank you. And, and I can't emphasize enough how appreciative we are to the staff. And again, for, uh, when you were tired of uh, rolling at the office, you sent them out among us. And uh, it was, as the uh, gentleman just said from uh, the Department of Transportation, uh, it was actually more fun in disagreement than in agreement. So without further uh, delay, Tony and I are going to present a, a, a copy of the law and then ask that anyone from the family who wishes will join us so we can reveal uh, this great artwork, this sign. And I, I will close by saying that uh, although naming a bridge after such an amazing guy perhaps seems uh, uh, less significant than deserved, we tried to rename a Caribbean island and failed. So we decided that we decided that if this bridge has been unnamed for this many decades, in and of itself, it's pretty significant, uh, and, it, and it deserves uh, a name as wonderful as Rowan Thank you, Senator. Sometimes the legislature can't. We believe we can name almost anything, but not an island yet. Uh, we do have here, and I'm going to present to uh, family here, a copy of the actual law. Uh, so, and thank you, Anybody from the family or anybody who has worked with, uh, with Roland uh, to come with, come with us? We're going to unveil the, the actual official plaque. 